Hi, I'm Kelly from the Electrical History Museum, the Nuclear Fusion and High Energy Research Forums, and a few other various assorted online history and scientific projects. Um, what I'm going to demonstrate for you today is this Edwards high frequency coil. And this is a very, very old high frequency apparatus. Um, someone painted it, it was originally bare wood. And a little bit about Edwin Lee Edwards. He was a high frequency you know, Tesla coil guy. He was an x-ray pioneer. Um, unfortunately, he got into some quack medicine stuff. And um, so these coils are actually pretty rare. This is one of the only ones I've ever seen. It's the only one like this I've ever seen. Um, no two of these that you'd find seem to be alike. And when I first saw this, the seller on eBay had it listed as a Jacob's Ladder or something. Um, I knew that wasn't right. I knew it was a high frequency um, electrotherapy machine. But uh, I didn't know what it was and I found out later about Edwards and how rare this machine actually is. So I've taken the screws out already and I'm going to lift up this panel here. I'm going to try to and show you what's underneath. So when I got this, this coil had actually melted and fallen out. Um, and that actually happened in storage. I stayed in contact with the seller that I bought it from later. I don't know if you can see this. I have to apologize. I do not have a videographer. It's just me and a tripod doing the best I can. So this is the Tesla coil. It's a pancake Tesla coil. Um, as you can see, that wax is fresh and new because I actually report it myself. And I'm going to link in the description of this video um, better photos and information on how I did that. I used a mix of beeswax and rosin, which is actually an old recipe for, for pouring pancake Tesla coils. And um, I'll link that in the description also. So here's the primary. It is actually potted. And here's a little secondary wire. You can see that the secondary is actually grounded to the primary. This here is the kicker coil. It's an electromagnetic interrupter. And I don't know if you can see that, um, but your two points are here and it's got a spring. This is actually an interrupter design that's kind of unique. And I don't like this design personally. It's intended to be self-cleaning. So the top point is actually loose. And the idea being it rotates and burns off any um, oxidation that happens. But what really happens is that you get a bunch of buildup oxidation between the screw and the point. So I don't think it's a very good design. It's an uncommon design. These are actually the two binding posts that the power cord plugs into. Um, this was in the late 18, early 1900s. Um, OSHA was not a thing yet. Yeah, you just high voltage contacts everywhere and you just plug the power cord right into binding posts. So I don't know if you can see this again. This coil was actually damaged. Um, somebody had messed with it, I think, before I got to it. And there was a big loop of wire sticking out. So I ended up cutting that and, and soldering it back together. This is the capacitor. And as you can see, there is a little, um, this is actually a Cornell capacitor. These are really popular with um, Tesla coil builders, modern Tesla coil builders. They are great for restoring these old things. A lot of modern Tesla coils, if you look, you'll see these guys. So this is the old capacitor underneath here. And this is actually lead foil and mica. And now what happens a lot of times is ozone buildup, the lead foil just falls apart. So these capacitors are often no good. So what I did, I just attached this capacitor, piggybacked it on there, left the old one in there. And this old capacitor is no longer into the, in the circuit. This modern capacitor is now powering this. And as you can see, this old rubber has turned to ceramic. Um, so I'm going to put this back in here. And this panel is actually wood, by the way. It's, uh, it's been painted black. And a lot of times you'll see these with marble panels or, or all Bakelite I've seen, not necessarily the Edwards ones, but these machines in general. 
Um, but this one happens to be wood. It has an on-off switch. The adjustment on the spark length is done by the interrupter. And this, you can adjust the gap. So, let's give it a whirl. Plug the power cord. The power cord is actually new. I've replaced it. It's just soldered tinned ends. Um, this is not polarized in any way. The dangers on these, these old machines are, are fairly apparent. Um, but there's a possibility that one side of the Tesla coil primary is in fact in series with the hot wire. So, caution is advised. <laughs> so I'm going to turn it on and when I turn down the interrupter you'll see as the points close you'll see a green spark there, you'll hear it. Now, this coil was made for electrotherapy, and this is a new cable also. I saved the ends and replaced the cable. It came with several electrodes which would have clipped into the top here. And this is, I believe, the only one that I have that, that came from this. Um, as you can see, it's fairly, um, it's old. It's kind of experimental looking, um, as is the handle. And this would have just clipped in here. I'm always nervous about doing this because I don't want to break the glass. So this was your electrotherapy treatment electrode. This would clip on here somehow. This, this really looks like a prototype. <laughs> it may have been, actually and stick that in there and when I turn this back on this will hopefully light up a very very old early plasma tube I'm always afraid of breaking this. <laughs> so, I don't believe Edwards actually used these for x-ray. Um, it's possible it could have been. I do not have any of the x-ray equipment that would have gone with it. Some x-rays were used for high frequency. Um, it was a specially designed tube and you'll see a few of those and I'll likely demonstrate one at some point. So, there you have it. The Edwin Lee Edwards electrotherapy high frequency device.